Where other nations scramble to respond, the United States Navy has already seen the threat, locked it in, and prepared the strike that ends the fight. Because in naval warfare, the first to react decides the outcome. And while everyone else is acting in minutes, the United States Navy acts in seconds. 90 seconds. That's how long it takes for your coffee to cool down, for a traffic light to cycle through, for an elevator to reach the top floor. And it's exactly how long the United States Navy needs to detect a threat, classify it, track it, assign a firing solution, and destroy it before your enemy realizes the fight has already ended. This isn't speculation. This is operational reality. Aegis compresses the detect to engage process into seconds, creating a window so small that adversaries don't respond to American strikes. They discover they've already lost. And when you understand how this system works, you realize modern naval warfare isn't about who has more ships or bigger missiles. It's about who completes the kill chain faster. And in that race, nobody else is even close. Let me show you the invisible machinery that makes 90 seconds the difference between victory and annihilation. The foundation is the Aegis combat system a name taken from Zeus's legendary shield in Greek mythology. But this shield doesn't just defend. It thinks, coordinates, and kills faster than human reaction time allows. At its core is rapid reaction and automation that minimizes operator dependency, enabling almost instantaneous decisions to engage. Here's what happens when a threat appears on the horizon. Powerful radar systems like AN-SPY-1 and today's AN-SPY-6 emit electromagnetic signals that detect approaching threats even at supersonic speeds. The moment that radar return appears, computers begin analyzing velocity, altitude, trajectory, and radar cross-section. Once threats are identified, computing systems like command and decision merge data from multiple sensors into a unified track file. Think about what that means in combat. A cruise missile traveling at Mach 3 covers one kilometer every second. At 200 kilometers out, you have less than three minutes before impact. But Aegis doesn't need three minutes. In scenarios where speed is of the essence, Aegis automates critical tasks, enabling response times in seconds. The system evaluates threats based on speed, altitude, direction, and identification friend or foe responses. Is it hostile? Is it closing? Does it match known threat profiles? The computer answers these questions in milliseconds while simultaneously calculating optimal intercept points for every weapon in the arsenal. Operators select a weapon system while the weapon control system calculates timing, intercept points, and firing parameters. And then it fires. Missiles, guided by systems like fire control radar, neutralize threats before they breach a defensive perimeter. The entire sequence, from detection to missile launch, happens faster than most people can read this sentence. But Aegis alone isn't what makes the 90-second window possible. It's the integration with weapons that can engage any threat at any range. The SM-6 missile represents the most versatile naval weapon ever deployed. It performs anti-air warfare, anti-surface warfare, and ballistic missile defense, three completely different missions with a single platform. The SM-6 uses the solid rocket booster and dual thrust rocket motors from the SM-3, the airframe from the SM-2, and the active seeker from the AIM-120 CAMRAAM. This design enables the missile to achieve speeds exceeding Mach 3 with an operational range of 370 kilometers. The active radar seeker means the missile doesn't need continuous guidance from the launching ship. Fire it, forget it, and it finds the target on its own. On 28th July, 2015, the Navy tested the modified SM-6 Dual-1 version to successfully intercept a ballistic missile target in the terminal phase, the last few seconds before it would impact. That capability fundamentally changed naval defense. Now a single missile type can destroy incoming aircraft, cruise missiles, ballistic missiles in their terminal phase, and surface ships, all launched from the same vertical launch system, all controlled by the same Aegis computers. The SM-3 handles threats the SM-6 can't reach, ballistic missiles in their mid-course phase, traveling through space above the atmosphere. The missile uses three stages to accelerate the kinetic warhead to speeds approaching 4.5 kilometers per second. The ship's AN-SPY-1 radar finds the ballistic missile target and the Aegis weapon system calculates a solution on the target. The entire engagement happens so fast that the missile destroys incoming threats before they re-enter the atmosphere. And for targets that don't require instant engagement, there's the Tomahawk Block 5. This subsonic cruise missile travels at about 550 miles per hour, 
far slower than the SM6 or SM3. But what it lacks in speed, it compensates for with range and versatility. The Tomahawk can travel more than 1,000 miles as a function of its subsonic speed, allowing more fuel-efficient flight. The Block 5 variant adds surface strike capability with an integrated seeker, turning the venerable land attack weapon into a ship killer. It has greater electronic hardening to work through jamming more effectively, and the hardening and electronic countermeasures make it harder to find and target with radar, improving its survivability. A destroyer can launch a Tomahawk from a thousand miles away, and by the time it arrives, the target has no warning, no time to maneuver, and no effective countermeasures. But these weapons only matter if you know where to aim them. That's where the P-8 Poseidon transforms the equation. This modified Boeing 737 carries over a hundred Sonoboys and can create instant underwater sensor grids across hundreds of square miles. The aircraft drops acoustic sensors in precise patterns, building a complete picture of everything beneath the surface. The P-8 doesn't just hunt submarines. It coordinates with satellites, surface ships, and underwater sensors to create a unified targeting picture. When the P-8 detects a submarine, it transmits coordinates directly into the Aegis network. Destroyers receive real-time targeting data, attack submarines get positioning updates, and the entire kill chain activates within seconds. Add satellite surveillance monitoring maritime activity from orbit, tracking surface disturbances that indicate submarine activity, spotting periscope signatures during brief surface transits. Space-based sensors provide theater-wide coverage that feeds directly into naval fire control systems, creating continuous tracking of potential threats across entire ocean basins. Now layer in the integrated undersea surveillance system, seabed hydrophone arrays listening continuously for submarine acoustic signatures. These passive sensors detect threats across entire oceans and feed tracking data into the same network that controls Aegis, the P-8, and every weapon system in the fleet. The result is something adversaries cannot match. Complete sensor-to-shooter integration across every domain. A satellite spots a surface ship. The data transmits to a destroyer 700 miles away. Aegis calculates the firing solution. A tomahawk launches within 30 seconds of target identification. The missile flies low, evading radar, and strikes before the target even knows it's been detected. Or an IUSS array detects a submarine leaving port. The data transmits to a P-8 Poseidon, which drops sonoboys to refine position. An attack submarine receives coordinates and closes for shadowing. If ordered to engage, the submarine fires torpedoes before the target realizes it's being tracked. The entire sequence, from initial detection to weapons release, happens in the 90-second window. In scenarios involving hypersonic threats where decisions must be made in fractions of a second, AI becomes indispensable, assessing and responding to electronic signatures and data signatures to ensure the Navy stays ahead. The system processes massive volumes of data that would overwhelm human operators, identifying patterns, predicting trajectories, and recommending engagement solutions faster than any crew could manually calculate. This is why the 90-second window matters so profoundly. Because in modern naval warfare, missiles travel at Mach 3 to Mach 10. Submarines can disappear in minutes. Enemy fleets move dozens of miles per hour. The time between detection and engagement must be nearly instant, or the threat slips away or kills you first. The United States Navy built systems specifically to dominate this timeline. Aegis automatically evaluates threats in milliseconds. United States destroyers can launch SM-6 missiles within seconds of confirming hostile intent. United States submarines can fire tomahawks almost immediately after target validation. And United States satellites provide early warning before enemies complete their launch sequences. This creates a window so small it's almost incomprehensible. By the time an adversary commits to an attack, by the time they light up their fire control radar, open missile bay doors, or position for a launch, America has already decided how the engagement ends. The detection happens. The classification happens. The tracking happens. The firing solution calculates, and the weapon launches, all before the enemy realizes they've been seen. In the latter part of 2023, a team of Lockheed Martin and United States Navy technical experts began analyzing data from engagements in the Red Sea where Aegis-equipped ships defended civilian vessels from attacks. The goal was enhancing the fleet's ability to counter drones and missiles. Thanks to these advancements to the Aegis system, capability upgrades were developed, tested, and installed significantly faster than before. Navy destroyers in the Red Sea successfully intercepted ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, and drone swarms, often engaging multiple threats simultaneously. That combat performance validates what the 90-second window actually means. It's not theoretical. It's not aspirational. It's operational reality proven under fire. Ships detected incoming threats, 
classified them as hostile, tracked their trajectories, calculated intercept solutions, and destroyed them, all within the time it takes to brew coffee. The Red Sea operations also revealed something crucial about adversary limitations. Houthi forces launched sophisticated coordinated attacks combining ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, and drones, designed to overwhelm defenses through sheer numbers. And Aegis ships defeated them repeatedly, because the system doesn't get overwhelmed. It's designed specifically to handle exactly this scenario, multiple simultaneous threats approaching from different vectors at different speeds. The multi-mission signal processor modifies transmitters of the SPY-1D radar to enable dual beam operation for reduced frame times and better reaction time, providing stability for all waveforms. This allows the radar to simultaneously track hundreds of targets while guiding dozens of interceptors. The computer doesn't choose between threats. It engages all of them, prioritizing based on time to impact and threat assessment. Think about facing this system from the other side. You're planning a naval strike against American forces. You know they have Aegis. You know they have SM-6, SM-3, and Tomahawk. You know they have P-8 Poseidons overhead and satellites watching from orbit. And you know that from the moment you commit to the attack, you have maybe 90 seconds before your launch platforms are destroyed, your missiles are intercepted, and your submarines are targeted. That's not a fight. That's a countdown to your own elimination. And there's no counter tactic that changes the math. You can't hide from the satellites. You can't evade the P-8. You can't outrun the SM-6, and you can't fire fast enough to beat the Aegis decision cycle. The 90-second window isn't just about speed, it's about certainty. The certainty that detection means engagement, that engagement means destruction, and that by the time you realize you're being targeted, the outcome has already been decided. Russia and China know this. They've watched American naval exercises. They've analyzed combat data from the Red Sea. They've studied the architecture, and they've realized something terrifying. There is no 90-second window for their forces. Their detection to engagement cycle takes minutes. Their sensor networks don't integrate seamlessly. Their weapons require manual intervention at multiple decision points. And in naval warfare, minutes might as well be hours. This is why the United States Navy remains untouchable at sea. Not because American ships are larger or more numerous. Not because American missiles are faster or more powerful. But because American systems complete the kill chain before adversaries finish asking permission to fire. And in modern combat, the side that decides first doesn't just win. They prevent the fight from ever becoming a fair contest. The 90-second window is the difference between naval warfare and naval slaughter. And right now, only one nation has the technology to operate inside it.